Thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm Marco. This is a joint work with uh, Rafael and Thomas and Melissa. Um, uh, we are at a, um, okay, let's see if this works actually. I'm pushing it wrong. Yeah, so th this is the proofs section. So this is a little bit unusual paper, I suppose, for a proofs session. So it's about uh, side channel attacks and, and post quantum. But actually, when we design signature schemes for specifically for side channel security, there's a lot of proving involved in that process. But to just recap, um, side channel security is something that in the industry we have to implement. So it's a, it's a business requirement. It's also a compliance requirement. So if, there's a, if uh, we do hardware implementations, we, we need to meet all of the security requirements that elliptic curve or RSA modules had in, in basically in hardware applications like platform security, which is uh, like protecting your boot process and your firmware updates and doing attestation. And then there's devices like authentication tokens, wallets, uh, uh, smart cards that require these, these properties. And when we are selling these products, the hardware products, uh, of course, the customer needs to be convinced that they are actually secure. So there's standards to be met, so common criteria. Um, advanced vulnerability analysis, EVAVAN, is, is a thing, which is like basically a penetration test for hardware. And then there's uh, with FIPS, uh, there's, there's also uh, side channel security coming up. There's a, the second ISO number there is wrong, actually. It's uh, 17825. So that is the non-invasive uh, testing thing, which is coming into FIPS. So basically, a hardware module needs to, needs to have these properties. And now that uh, Dilithium and Falcon especially have been chosen as the standard things and are basically replacing RSA and uh, elliptic curves everywhere in most applications. These implementations have to meet all of the, all of the same, same properties. So that, that's where we are at. Uh, side channel things are just uh, absolutely a requirement in hardware. Okay, let's see if I can. All right, so this is, this is actually, we are proposing a new scheme, to be honest. So uh, it's, uh, the mass raccoon is a, is a like one version of this family of schemes that are able to do all kinds of things that lattice schemes have previously not been able to do. So, so we are basically overcoming some limitations that both the lithium and the falcon have. Um, so in this talk, we, we, ha we have a couple proofs. So there's side channel security proof, um, which is in the strong non-interference framework, understood in the context of side channel security, where it means a sp specific thing. And then, of course, a crypt analytic security proof, uh, which is a reduction to MLWE, module learning with errors, and, and MC's problems, which are the same problems that Dilithium is based, based on. So there's a fair amount of confidence in Dilithium, so these are established things. And of course, because we are talking about a practical proposal, there's a little bit of a performance evaluation and also side channel security evaluation. Now, Basics about masking. So masking has become basically the main method of doing side channel uh, countermeasures for post-quantum crypto. So it has a couple of nice things. Uh, uh, so masking basically is a, like a secret sharing thing. You split a, any sensitive variable into these randomized shares. And it can be shown that the task of an attacker or the number of basically observations you need grows exponentially with these, these shares. So that's what we want in crypto. We want the, the countermeasure to be such that it, it causes exponential effort to, uh, you know, from information theoretic viewpoint to the, to the uh, opponent. Uh, so the, the proofs can be made in a couple of different ways. There's deep probing security, that's the classical ISW thing where you show that if you insert the probes anywhere in the, any line on the, on the code, any variable, uh, but not T plus one probes, then you learn nothing. So that, that's, the, that's the proof. Then there's also a noisy leakage model, which is a little bit more realistic, where you, where you uh, obtain basically all information in there, but with some, some noise. Uh, at, uh, originally Gaussian, but now, nowadays it's a little bit different. So 
So, the, 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 so this, this proof is actually in the T-probing security model, right? Now, masking has complexity attached to it. So uh, as in some other operations, uh, uh, linear stuff is linear to mask, as in multi-party computation and some, some other fields. Uh, Nonlinear operations, when you process those with this sort of uh, secret sharing stuff, generally require quadratic effort. So that's D squared. That, that is an upper bound and tends to be like the actual complexity for most things. Now, some nonlinear operations are quasi-linear. So that's D log D. That, that's what we want from nonlinear scheme. Uh, but not all. There might be, there's some work towards that that we might be able to reduce quadratic stuff to quasi-linear, but uh, the overhead is just massive there currently. Okay, I did go backwards, now I'm going forwards again. Now, what, we, what, what makes masking hard for Delithium is that we have a bunch of operations within the algorithm if we want to comply with the spec that are just hard to mask. Like it has a symmetric cipher in there, or symmetric primitive. The Getchuk permutation of shake, it does this sort of bit ma uh, dropping optimization to shrink the uh, signature and, and, and the public key. Those are shifts and it mixes that with arithmetic operations, so, so that, that's just quadratic. It converts between arithmetic and Boolean stuff, uh, so forth, so it's, it's quadratic. So what, what we did is, is create a similar scheme that entirely, entirely avoids those quadratic operations. So, so that, that's the novel contribution here. It is quasi-linear, so so we can we can go into crazy masking orders and have very good side channel security here, like which is basically impossible with, with, with these other schemes. So going forward, now the the blueprint, like the actual scheme on an abstract level, it's the fiat summary with upwards. It's actually exactly the same thing as with dilithium. So we know, we know that this is, this is all right. People have looked at the lithium. We, we do a security reduction to exactly the same core problems in, in there. So, so that's it. Now I'm, um, I'm posing the question again. Could we do this entirely with quasi-linear catches? And if you look at the operations in there in this sort of high-level pseudocode, you can see that, yeah, probably, because it's not multiplying secret variables with secret variables, which is typically uh, what causes quadratic complexity. You have to consider every combination of every share of both parties, but it's, uh, it's multiplying secret variables with constants and, and, and public variables. And so, so uh, yeah, one, one can probably do that. Um, now, uh, now, yes, we did that, but in order to prove that it's actually secure, Every little operation in there needs to be decomposed into these gadgets, and then you need to uh, do a proof that they are, uh, they have T probing security in, the, in this case. So, uh, uh, actually, strong non interference property, which allows them to be composed this way, you know, attached to each other uh, to make, make a big algorithm out of little, little gadgets. So, the, the proof uh, proceeds like that. Uh, of course, first one needs to do a sensitivity analysis because not everything going on in there is secret because it's a, it's a public key algorithm. So that, that was a little complicated. Now, now the, the, so, so in addition to the actual signatures, generation thing, also key generation has this property where we can, we can do it at, at very high masking order. Not so super necessary in in like a hardware implementation because keys are generated rarely, but we do have that. It might be useful for some other applications. Um, now the, all right. Now what, what the core gadgets look like, here's an example because there's uh, like Dilithium, for example, requires 12 gadgets. We, we require a fair amount of like little things that do side channel they are to do algorithmic, uh, algorithmic steps in such a secure manner. So, so for example, here, say, refresh gadget that just uh, re-randomizes everything. So this was a key uh, step in order to get to quasi-linear overall complexity because this happens to be, this very simple thing happens to be 
quasi-linear, and this uh, refresh catches uh, in, the, in the middle of the algorithm. It's very simple, actually. If you look at it, it's just recursively going in there. But if you insert these, these probes in any of those intermediate variables, if you are limited to T probes, you should not be able to like learn any secret variable. So that, that's the proof. Now, th these require a little bit special like hardware features to implement. Like there's lots of randomness required, like a lot of randomness, and it has uh, specific requirements. So actually, in the hardware bit, we, we do have direct support for these masking features that are required here. Now, going forward, so it's a new scheme. So there's this thing about uh, parameter selection. Uh, it's a complicated task for a lot of schemes. It's a, like a multi-target um, uh, thing. But anyway, we do have the two theorems about uh, reducing to the, the core problems and also the concrete security analysis in there in the style of uh, the NIST BQC competition. Now, there's also a hardware implementation. So it goes to masking order 31 or 32 shares. And that is a very high number. So I, I don't think that any symmetric scheme, for example, has been implemented at such a high number. <laughs> so this is, in a way, more secure than any symmetric scheme. Notice that, we, for example, the hash function doesn't need to be masked. It's a signature scheme, so we are just uh, hashing a, a message to be signed. And it's still pretty fast, because it's quasi-linear. Uh, you can imagine that if it was quarterly, then uh, 32 squared, well, that's 1,000. So yeah, it would be a lot slower. Uh, on a low level, we did uh, 200,000 trace IS, uh, sorry, TVLA type uh, leakage assessment. TVLA is limited to first order, but anyway, it kind of kind of shows that it, uh, it's it's legit in this sort of industry testing as well. Now, conclude. Uh, so we've, the sort of theoretical contribution is that we've shown that it's possible that the, to do public key encryption or public key, uh, public key signatures in quasi-linear mass uh, time. So this has actually wider applications because you know if you look at it in an abstract way, you, you can imagine that there's some other types of uh, computational settings where such sig signatures are useful. Uh, there's some new techniques in there uh, and also experiments that are happening. I can tell you that the NIST PQC competition has an on-ramp on 1st of June. We have a version of this. Even though they didn't want lattice space schemes, we are still pushing a lattice space scheme into that competition. Uh, so, so the, and uh, many of the details have been changed from this particular version that is in SP. So in a couple of weeks, that should be our, a new version of Raccoon for, for NIST. Thank you, Marco. Do you have any questions? So I do have one question. Uh, so you show that a mask a raccoon yeah. uh, is faster than mask dilithium. So what about the mask uh, implementations? How do they compare? Uh, so so uh, mask, OK, I, I had a little figure of that too. So there's limits to like uh, how, um, first of all, I'm not aware of an open source implementation of mass dilithium. So, so the, the, all of this is based on, on like other people's numbers and other people's papers. It's, I can't benchmark that. We have a proprietary implementation of dilithium our, ourselves, but it doesn't go into high masking orders. So yeah, I mean, in practice, every additional share that you have in there requires more, more power, so uh, more, more time. So yeah, it, it does grow quite thickly, uh, but every additional share of, uh, of uh, mass raccoon only requires almost a constant amount of uh, additional effort and memory. Let me clarify that. So uh, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about unmask, mask oh. and unmask dilithium. Okay, so so it's it's about even. So so thing is that dilithium. I mean, it has like AVX2 optimizations and things. So, so this is a C, C code, which might even account for the difference in, in speed between these. So they are roughly equal. The public key is a little bit longer, but it's in the same kind of magnitude. So um, in, a, in a way, this, uh, uh, so I mean, my co-author, Thomas Press, he's, he's a 
He's also the author of Falcon, which is impossible to mask it at even first order. So in a way, this kind of grew out of our uh, frustration of, of masking dilithium. So, this work. Okay, thank you very much. That concludes our session. So let's thank Mark. Thank you.